everybody. So today we are here to talk about the 2013 Oscars. All right, so let's talk about Frozen. Survive this blizzard! That's no blizzard! Sorcery! That's my sister! That would have been nice to know. Heads up! No. It is not nice to throw snow, people! Whoa, 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 uh, feisty me... pants. Just let the snowman be. I'm calm. Great. <gasps> uh -huh. Olaf, you're melting. Some people are worth melting for. You're just maybe not right this second. <laughs> Come on, buddy, faster! No! <laughs> Olaf! Hang in there, guys! Uh, it was the 53rd animated film from Walt Disney. And it had a lot of unique things going for it. First of all, it's the first Disney princess movie that is about that has two princesses, which is really exciting. And you know, it kind of gives two girls that that young girls can look up to. Uh, it's the first Disney princess film where a character actually becomes a queen, and it is the first Disney princess film to feature two sisters. But it tells the story of two sisters, Anna and Elsa, and Elsa has a special power, and she can make winter, basically make ice. It's an accident, just hurting Anna, and so she is told that if she loves her sister, she needs to high, she needs to learn to control her gift, and so she's isolated and she's hid away until she can control it, but she can never seem to control it. Uh, but Anna doesn't know that. She, Anna doesn't understand what is going on with Elsa. The music started with the opening uh, with a choral number uh, that I think is really strong. I think, And then we get Frozen Heart, which is really good too. And it kind of, and then we get to, do you want to build a snowman? And you get a lot of story exposition in there uh, within a really cute song. And Elsa is going to have to take on the role of, of queen. She's going to be coronated. Uh, and this is really nervous for her because she has had to hold in all of these powers and all of these things. And, you know, I think that there are a lot of things that are very similar to the Little Mermaid that are in Frozen. But the thing with Little Mermaid is that Ariel is never told that if she rebels, she will hurt somebody. She does end up hurting people, but she doesn't know that. And whereas Elsa is told that if she is the person that she thinks she is, she will kill her sister or there's that potential to kill her sister and hurt other people. And that's really, really uh, a tragic thing that, I mean, she can't be the person she is or she will hurt someone. It ends up that Anna meets this guy named Hans and they fall instantly in love and have a great song, really funny. And at the coronation, it's of course Anna that ends up pushing Elsa because Elsa is the, Anna is the person that Elsa is the most worried about and the most invested in not using her powers on. So when Anna pushes Elsa, then things happen and she ends up using her powers and she ends up creating this winter and and going off and of course then Anna has to go after her and try to find her sister and that's when Anna meets this guy named Kristoff and of course it's when we get our big song in the movie let it go and then everything kind of goes from there. There's a lot of other unique things, I think, in Frozen. Uh, I love the music. Uh, it's the first Disney musical that was, there was a true belt Broadway musical. Uh, of course, they had uh, Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King that became Broadway musicals, but a lot of those were more mixed sound, and this was a true belt sound. And you either like that sound or you don't. I do. And of course, they got Idina Menzel, who I think is a complete goddess, and I love her so much. I've been a huge fan of her all the way back to Rent. Kristen Bell did a great job. You and then they meet Olaf, who is kind of the comic relief for the film. And I felt like they gave us just enough of him. I wouldn't want a whole Olaf movie, but we get just enough for him to be sweet and endearing and funny and just lovely. And Josh Gad does a great job with his song sisters so that's part of the reason why I really love Frozen so much is that I could see my sisters in in both Anna and Elsa and uh, especially in Elsa because I have a sister that's really quiet and private and it's a little bit hard to sometimes figure out what she's 
what she wants and where her heart is. And so I really related to her character and Anna's inability to get through to Elsa. And then, of course, Anna is a lot like two of my sisters uh, that has little bits of two of my sisters. I have a sister that's named Anna, so that's sort of perfect. She's a little bit more like Rapunzel, I would say. But I just really related to the sister dynamic in the story. And I thought that Kristoff was a really fun Disney male character. They tend to not have much much dialogue in a lot of, you know, Prince Charming and people like that. This is a character that has opinions, that says them, and is sarcastic and funny. And I thought this movie did such a good job of really, of tricking me at least. I, I thought for sure that Hans was going to end up with Elsa, but then it ends up that she doesn't end up with a love interest. And I thought they pulled that off so well, and it was unique. Uh, they tried to do it in Brave, but I don't think very successfully, because there was no, there was no sort of other option out there. And then then the ending I thought worked so well with them, the sisters saving each other and not a man saving them. I thought, don't know if Disney can necessarily go to that, uh, go to that well again, like they tried with Maleficent and it didn't work, but because it was something new and fresh, I think it, it did work for, uh, the, for Frozen. And, uh, you know, you have so many nice moments. It's really good from Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez. Of course, you've got the great song, Let It Go, uh, that, <laughs> that has become a real anthem for girls, just like Part of Your World was an anthem for me. And I think that's so wonderful and excites me that girls have an anthem. And so I'm just, I love the fact that uh, at the Idina Menzel concert that I went to, the Idina was literally like surrounded by little girls singing Let It Go and they were singing it to their hearts content. This is a movie that makes little girls so happy. So that's why it bums me out when you hear people dogging on it so much. Like little girls, it's fine if you don't like it. I don't care. But little girls should be allowed to like what they like. Oh, it's so overhyped. Part of the Disney experience is being a part of that hype. That's part of what makes movies fun when you're when you're little is being a part of something bigger than yourself. That's what makes made so many people fall in love with Star Wars that made so many people fall in love with Little Mermaid. People say, I feel like people have to dig really deep to find these little flaws. And yes, there are plot holes in Frozen, uh, but it's to me, it's not any more egregious than plot holes in Tangled or plot holes in Beauty and the Beast. Totally was surprised by the villain that, that I was not expecting that because to me, it seemed like he was a good person. He was handing out blankets and stuff. And then I think they did such a wonderful job creating a new princess movie that uh, will really stand the ages. So the next film that we're going to talk about um, from 2013 is called Ernest and Celestine. You sure about this? Cross my heart. Use her frighten our children. Children, do I frighten you? A After this, will there be other stories for us? <laughs> There'll be plenty of other stories, Celestine. And this is done by some of the same people that did uh, The Triplets of Belleville and The Illusionist. By Stephanie Aubier, Vincent Patar, and Benjamin Ren Renner. Based on books by Gabriel Vincent. And this is done in a very sketchy watercolor feel. It looks like a storybook. It looks kind of, it, it has a little bit of a Winnie the Pooh feel. Uh, it's a really sweet, cute little story. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's about a mouse who's basically told that bears are evil. And it's about a bear that is told that mice are gross and that and you should eat them, basically. <laughs> the question that the two worlds have is the mice are kind of like the tooth fairies for the bears. And so, like, Celestine is taught to fear the bears, but then to also go get the teeth. And so you have these two characters. Celestine is basically like an orphan, and so she's out collecting teeth. And then Ernest is, is a big, big bear, and he is out panhandling and out trying to get money, and he wants to be a performer. His parents want him to be a lawyer, which I thought was really funny. And he ends up meeting Celestine. He's going to eat her, and she says, no, 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 I'll take you to someplace where you can get tons of candy, much better stuff. 
And so they end up actually, she ends up taking to a candy store and they like loot the candy store. And then he ends up taking her to a tooth store and they end up looting the tooth store. And so then they're kind of on the run and they're this unlikely duo and they like hide out for the winter. And what I think is really cool is that they don't make them like instantaneous friends. Like, and, you know, Celestine is really spunky and funny and a great character whereas like Ernest is really gruff and grumbly and everything and so it's kind of just about how they end up being friends and then they end up eventually getting arrested for these two things and Celestine is put on trial by the bears and Ernest is put on trial by the mice and like their various prejudices of their groups come through in the trial so it's a really sweet simple little story with beautiful animation that I think your, especially your, your young kids will really enjoy and take away a nice lesson about prejudice and labeling and everything else. So I highly recommend checking out Ernest and Celestine. Next film we're talking about is Despicable Me 2. <laughs> Pins and needles. I am the league's director, Silas Ramsbottom. Bottom. <laughs> Hilarious. Are you really going to save the world? Cruise back in the game. It's from Illumination, and this, of course, is the sequel to Despicable Me. And I personally think that Monster University is better than Despicable Me 2, but it has some good things about it. I do think it is better than Despicable Me. He grew and made him a good person. He's the father of the three little girls, Argo, Edith, and Agnes. And he's a really like overprotective, doting father, which I really like Steve, Vo Steve Carell's vocal performance here. I think it's a celebrity voice casting that really works. And I think he's really funny. And, and of course, you get the Minions. And I was really wondering if I would like the Minions here because I didn't really like the Minions movie. And so I didn't know if I'd be kind of over them, but I have to say they're really funny here and they're used just enough, kind of like with Olaf. It's kind of a silly story. It's about, so they, this anti-villain league recruits Gru to try to find this villain who's stolen this mutagen that kind of makes things crazy uh, when they take the mutagen. And so that's sort of the story. And he's also at the same time kind of worried about the girls and, and boys and dating and everything else. And there's sort of a love interest character uh, for Gru that's in the anti-villain league. And uh, it's bright and colorful. It looks nice. There are some good laughs. There's definitely some inappropriate innuendo and humor, which I don't like. I don't care for that, but not so much that it was really off-putting for me. It's overall an enjoyable comedy for kids. Okay, the next film we're going to talk about is very unique. It's probably the one that I think is the biggest competition to Frozen. Uh, it's called The Wind Rises. <laughs> This is the, the final film by the great Hayao Miyazaki, and he, of course, is the master of Japanese animation and anime. Uh, and uh, this is such a different film from him. I really do love it. I had this at 28 in my top 50 countdown, and I have Frozen at 21, so they're pretty close. Uh, this is a film that's based on a true story of Jiro Horikoshi. Sorry, it's a hard name. About Jiro, who was the designer of the Mitsubishi A5M. And so this famous airplane, and that's his big dream is to design airplanes. And what I think is really beautiful about this movie is that it's really one of those films that is just about a person's life and doesn't really make a whole lot of judgments about a person. This just says, this is what it was. What do you think? And, you know, because there are, it just sort of says there's not a strong plot to the movie, but I think that that really, really works. You know, and, uh, so he has this dream of being, a airplane designer but the problem is is that he's also alive during World War II and so he has to know that his planes and from the very beginning it's clear he knows that his dream could cause people to die but he still has the dream you know he can't affect what other people do with that dream and so it's just a really interesting dynamic and you no know, magic in the film which is unique for Studio Ghibli and uh, instead there's some dreams where he dreams of an Italian uh, a aviation designer named Giovanni Battista Caproni. 
So he dreams about this guy and he gives him advice for life and making choices and, of course, airplanes and not letting anything take away from his dream. The relationship that he has with a girl named Nayanka is beautiful and, and tragic and heartbreaking and everything else. It's a touching story about dreaming and never giving up and, and finding hope in even dark situations like war and disease and death and everything else. That the, the power of a dream to get you through the worst in life. I think I really like the music by Joe Hirashi uh, in The Wind Rises and it has a little bit of an Italian flair which I think is something different as well. So the next film we're gonna talk about is The Croods. And then Look out! You really need to see this. So this is a DreamWorks film, and I had not seen this film. This was new to me out of all of these. And I have to say, I, I was really skeptical going into it, but I thought it was really fun and charming. And I thought they made some really good choices. I'm not a big DreamWorks fan, but it's about a family, which is definitely like a novel concept. Most animated films are about individuals. Uh, a lot of them are about orphans. And so about a whole family, there's Incredibles, there's Meet the Robinsons. There are a few films, but but it's just really nice when those do happen about an intact family with a mother and a father and children. And basically it tells the story of this family, the Crudes, who are a prehistoric caveman family. And they, the dad is voiced by Nicolas Cage, quite brilliantly, I must say. And he wants to keep them completely safe. And he makes them stay in this cave and not go outside because he wants them to be safe. So one day there's basically like this earthquake and it forces them out into the world and they were so creative about how they designed this prehistoric world so there's all these like animals that are they completely designed and that you've never seen before that were really surprising and, uh, and i think made it really unpredictable you didn't know what they were going to come up with next meet this prehistoric man this young young man uh, voiced by ryan reynolds he knows how to light fire knows how to do all of these things and so like the nicholas cage dad is really threatened by that and there's like a hilarious scene where they totally let it go all Nicolas Cageian on them uh, where he flips out and he's like I've got ideas I know how to do things and it totally seemed like classic Nicolas Cage I thought it was really funny and I thought all the voice casting was strong in this like they didn't need the celebrities but I think they did a good job I think Emma Stone as the lead character Eep is good and I liked Ryan Reynolds I'm normally not a big fan of his but I thought he did a good job and Catherine Keener and Cloris Leachman it's just a, a solid a solid cast and I really bought these characters as a family and I thought there was a nice heart to it I thought it had a, some good jokes that made me laugh and it's very visually inventive and creative and I didn't think it was boring, you know, some people do. I didn't. I thought, it, like I said, it was unpredictable. I didn't know what kind of animals were going to come next or what kind of things that they were going to have to deal with next. And so I think that you're, that it'll be a great choice for like a family movie night. So yeah, that is the films in 2013. I, obviously, I like Frozen the best, and but I, I wouldn't have a problem with Wind Rises. I think that's a really wonderful film. Uh, the other ones I think are fun and I enjoy them, but I don't think they're at the same level as Frozen or The Wind Rises, but I think for it being one of the weaker years, I think it had some strong entries as well, uh, and I like all five of these films. So let me know what you think of these five films, and if you think that, uh, which one you think it should have won, and you know, if you don't like Frozen, that's cool. Put in the comment section, but try to be nice, uh, and don't troll. No trolls allowed. <laughs> uh, and uh, so thanks so much. Please subscribe to my channel. And I uh, hope you have a great day.